I want to uh, express my gratitude to the Robert Jackson Center for giving us the opportunity to participate in this uh, forum. Uh, let me preface my remarks by giving you a brief background to what a special court is. It is a special court for Sierra Leone. And um, it was a court set up jointly by the government of Sierra Leone and the United Nations in 2002, pursuant to Resolution 1815. And uh, it is mandated to try those that bear the greatest responsibility for serious violations of international humanitarian law and Serbian law committed in the territory of Serbia since November 1996. It is a small court, but it has taken giant strides in international criminal law. It is the day of international criminal law jurisprudence. And I say that because um, it is a court that is known for prosecuting and securing conviction for the first time for the recruitment of child soldiers. It is also the court that is known for the prosecution and conviction for the first time for the offense of forced marriage. It is also the court that is known to date for the prosecution and securing of convictions for the offense of attacking peacekeepers during conflict. And um, having said that, these are the giant strides that the special court has made. In the course of its eight years, we've been able to try five cases. To start off with is the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council case, the AFRC. These were regular soldiers from the regular army that overthrew the government of President, former President Army Tijan Kapar on the 25th of April of May. 1997. And um, I'm pleased to note also that uh, amongst us here present today, we do have one of the senior trial attorneys, Leslie Taylor, in that case. Leslie, could you still stand, please? <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. I pointed that out to show that we are a special court of gender sensitivity. <laughs> Leslie has been a senior trial attorney in that case. And we still maintain that. And even as I speak to date in the Taylor trial, as you all may be aware, is one of the biggest cases of the special court. The principal attorney in that case is with the house. And uh, we are very proud of our work that she's doing in the head. The case of the AFRC is completed. We secure convictions for three accused persons. And um, one of the accused persons was uh, sentenced to 50 years imprisonment, another 45 years imprisonment, another to 40 years. We are known for giving heavy sentences because of the gravity of the offences that were committed. It is indeed a small court for the offences were great. We are known for amputations where girls, boys, women had their limbs cut off, their hands cut off. We are also known for the short and long sleep. Those were moments when victims would be asked the question, do you want a short sleep or a long sleep? If you want a short sleeve, your hand will be cut off by the wrist. If you want a short sleeve, it will be cut off along the elbow. So we are known for those type of mutilations. We are also known for the engraving on the bodies of victims of the words of the letters RUF, AFRC, or CDM. We marshal all these victims in front of the court. We are also known for the recruitment of child soldiers. Many children were used in hostilities. And many children were under the use of hard substances. They were forced to leave their homes and family members. So when I see the crimes were great, I know what I speak about. So despite its size, its work has been voluminous and it has made significant contributions. We've been able to see their convictions. Chief Inger Norman is an interesting character. And uh, it played a significant role in the sense of his organization of the CDF. He was believed to be a hero because he fought against the rebels. But we thought it fit that in spite of the side he fought, if crimes were committed against innocent civilians, you have to face the crucibles of the law. Like we always say, no one is above the law. And we care less which side you're fighting on. So he was elected. And like 
I think uh, Professor Sadat mentioned it. We've been heavily criticized by some quarters in the Sahelian population. This man is a hero who was fighting in defense of property. And it was even argued in court that he was fighting in defense of democracy. These were all arguments that were brought up before the court, challenged, and we are given before the court. And the prosecution has been quite successful in all those arguments. And um, in that case, unfortunately, Chief Ingenoman died before we concluded the case. He died after the close of the prosecution's case and the defense case, but before judgment was delivered. So we did not get the opportunity for the public to hear the value of his case, because on the common law, he terminates at the death of the accused. The Revolutionary United Front started sometime in 1990 in Libya, together with Charles Taylor, while Charles Taylor was soldier in Libya. In the early 90s or late 80s, there was this Pan-African crusade in Libya, training revolutionaries to come and invade the entire sub region. And uh, in 1991, he launched his revolution into Syria through the Liberian board, that is, former leader of the Arya Foodies and Co. And uh, it, was, it was a brutal war, at the least. The petitions I was telling about, we had a signature of the IUF on the FRC. And it continued for 11 years. By the end of the 11 years, they were able to capture about two parts of the country, including the diamond areas, the diamond various areas. They were able to fill the crisis and gain and acquire weapons through the sale and mining of diamonds. And that brings in force people. And what happens in these mining fields? As prosecutors, that is why sometimes we go through uh, psychological treatments. You wouldn't believe. For example, there is what we call the savage pit. Mm. Savage pit was a mining pit where hundreds of people were killed and they were all thrown into that pit, the savage pit. And uh, adjacent to the savage pit was this house where about 50 people were thrown into the house and set on fire. And one of them attempted to run out of the house through the window. He was captured and thrown back into the fire. This is the kind of evidence that we had to deal with. The role of the special court is very outstanding when it comes to protection of the rights of the child and protection of the rights of the boy. And as we look back, by way of legacy, what has the court done? Because um, we're not only as prosecutors looking at securing convictions, but also participate in the healing process. We've been there, we've done educational programs, we teach at the law school, we teach at the university, and uh, we've also had training sessions. And of course, the journal on the ground is our outreach. We've done so much to let the people be aware and understand the proceedings of the special court. We held town meetings, we've had village meetings, we do video showings. Over 3,000 meetings we've held. And we, even the prosecution, participate in the speeches. We listen, we receive questions from the audience. And that is what has really made a understanding in terms of the people appreciating the workings of the court and understanding what is the rule of law. And that we are there to put an end to impunity. And also, when you look back by way of legacy, that is what we leave behind. Today, we've seen new legislations from Parliament on gender. Yes, now it is illegal for a girl child to be given to marriage under 16 years. Yes, we claim credit to that because we brought to the forefront, forefront issues of women. And also, we've seen now the introduction of the customary law marriage act that is giving rights to women in terms of acquisition of property. So, not to be claimed to everything, but the presence of the special court even immediately after the most recently held elections, there was peace, no violence, for the first time in the history of Syria. When people were asked, they always say, well, the special court is here, I don't want to be indicted. So, again, not only the securing of convictions, but what is the contribution in that human process? And we make clear that we will contribute to the stability of Syria. And I'll leave you with this for a moment until later in the afternoon. I thank you very much.